Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Mohammed Al Jabr. I'm the vice chairman of the National Committee for Steel Industry in Saudi Arabia. Uh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate uh, being with all of you. I appreciate that, and thanks a lot for uh, being part of this. Uh, good, and uh, as a panelist of this uh, uh, this uh, discussion. It's evening for me. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank the earlier speakers who gave very interesting perspectives. Um, I would start speaking from the point of view of a manufacturer based out of Oman. Uh, I'll keep it short, uh, probably leave more for the panel discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And uh, MM Steel Club for giving us the uh, privilege to be a, a panelist today. And greetings to my dear panelists as well as uh, the participants. Thank you, uh, Yeah. Let me start by uh, thanking uh, MM Steve for giving us this chance to be a panelist and uh, to speak to such an, a large and uh, important uh, audience for this uh, uh, important subject. Uh, thank you very much for everybody attending and thank you for MM Steve. It's a good opportunity to share ideas together. Uh, here in the region, uh, the main impact, of course, because of the COVID, is, is the construction. And the steel main uh, uh, sector is the construction. So almost uh, uh, reduced uh, more than actually 50% uh, in the construction side. But in the other downstream industry, more or less, as I said earlier, 40 to 50 uh, and percent. it's a very difficult situation for every business and uh, have have so many impacts and uh, I, I i think you know, you know, each each uh, decision maker will will start think of uh, uh, how to to uh, react to this uh, pandemic and the effect on that and in uh, and, and the supply chain, supply chain side it was uh, severely affecting especially uh, in our country and uh, Middle East and North Africa, uh, importing the raw material is coming from outside uh, the countries and uh, so many shipping line and the mining were uh, heavily uh, affected and approximately having very short uh, production capacity, which affecting the, the, the production uh, requirement or production capacity. Uh, uh, as far as handling the current pandemic goes, obviously it's a very bad situation. It's not a situation which anybody anticipated. Uh, for a manufacturing industry, which is basically a contact sport where people are working together in various areas, it's always not possible to keep two meters distance from each other. Uh, safety of employees and awareness is important. Obviously, the precautions which need to be taken in terms of PPE, in terms of hand washing, all that need to be there. Uh, but what is very important is because uh, most of the manufacturing industry, at least in the GCC, has a lot of people uh, working at uh, various levels. Uh, awareness without fear is very important. Uh, this is something which we have encountered over the last one month. Because apart from the pan disease, which is a pandemic, there is also a pandemic of misinformation and a pandable pandemic of too much Google searching. Uh, so it's very important for uh, the people who are running the businesses uh, to keep the morale of the team high and give them adequate awareness so that they come back to work uh, with with all the precautions, but without too much fear. As a result, uh, we have some observations and uh, statements to make. To start with, world is uh, a lesser rich place uh, nowadays. The purchasing power has reduced uh, substantially. Uh, we are anticipating and we are seeing more taxes imposed by the governments, as it had been the case in the, the previous financial crisis globally. Uh, the interest rates are uh, reduced. That's a compensating uh, uh, effect. However, on the other side, uh, the risk premiums are higher. So it makes the liquidity, the limited amount of liquidity, uh, shy. Uh, so when it comes to the industry players, we see that the roles are being redefined. A major example is we are, uh, we are anticipating and we are seeing more to come 
in the governments becoming uh, bigger clients. And uh, essentially due to the priorities, due to the buying behaviors, uh, we, are, we are seeing a stumbled heavy industry, which needs to find a new way going forward in the, uh, in the new normal. So how do we navigate this uh, unprecedented change? There's a lot of unknowns. And uh, even for our own business, uh, regardless of the size and the geography and the activity, uh, we are continuously trying to see what has happened so that we will identify how to navigate through this uh, If you can see, Tunisia is not a big market. We are only a 12 million uh, uh, population. It's like half the population of New Delhi or of Istanbul. Uh, the consumption of steel per year is uh, half of what you see on the installed capacities. So we don't go more than 800 to 900,000 tons of long products. Uh, for the billet production, we only have one government-owned company who is producing billets because uh, right now it is not allowed. The authorizations are not given to any other uh, private sector company, so we only have re-rollers. And uh, the situation right now uh, looks pretty much tough because m most of our customers are uh, having uh, a lot of trouble uh, with banks to pay their uh, raw material uh, for uh, the billets, especially that uh, they were engaged in the first quarter and they have bought uh, their needs. And then all of a sudden uh, the goods uh, arrived to Tunisia, the payment uh, arrived at, uh, I mean, they had to pay their, their suppliers and there was no uh, cash or no uh, credits from bank to, to honor their engagement. So most of them now are uh, really struggling to find uh, ways to honor uh, these payments and uh, continue uh, their uh, uh, Worldwide, it's even worse than the 2008 crisis. Just because at the uh, 2008 crisis, we were facing a clear enemy. We are facing financial uh, 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 parameters with that we know, know how to deal with. It's a crime to have solutions, hard solutions, but there are solutions. Now uh, we are facing so many things when it's going to start, when it's going to, it's going to finish. We all said uh, the global recession would cause loss of 195 million jobs. This figure is, is 10 times of 2008 global financial crisis. Diplomatic. Uh question but let me let me say by saying i fully agree with you that the chinese has been uh, start uh, moving very fast and uh, it can be proven that uh, that uh, the demand which has been um, clearly uh, pointed out and in fact uh, it is almost uh, first time since a long time that Saudi mills and maybe GCC mills also exporting uh, to China. So it is vice versa. Uh, probably this will be uh, temporary. Uh, I think Chinese are very aggressive. Uh, they started uh, earlier and they will come back earlier. So uh, yes, we have to monitor our market and uh, introduce the measurement to make sure that uh, interruption on the each individual market is not really uh, impacted. And this is why we, we are working here in Saudi, for example, to, to introduce measures in quality control and uh, specification on anti-dumping and also on tariff. So yes, I agree with you that the, 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 there is a potential threat coming in the future. Well, uh, uh, the demand is, is, is still there, as I mentioned, for the projects that is being budgeted. And the state large projects are, are consuming good capacities of the uh, fabricators and the steel supply. And uh, thank God they have already prepared for that since some time. And they are not talking only the local market. They have some good backlog from uh, uh, countries and some also in the region. The first thing we need to uh, understand is 
if you compare 2015 uh, when major dumping happened from China, where hot roll prices went to as low as $250, uh, whereas even in this pandemic situation where demand in most places came down to less than 50% for a small period of time, hot roll prices never went below $400 uh, because costs have remained where they are. Uh, one thing we have to understand is the Chinese, in a way, have understood what is marginal cost of production and what is the cost at which they can sell to maintain a profitable business. As I can understand, the Chinese are no more selling for the sake of selling. At this point of time, in 2015, there was major dumping of hot roll from China, or rather, let me call it supply from China to Middle East and to countries like India. What's happened in the last one month? The Indians have exported more than 400,000 tons of hot roll to China. Why? Because they find it cheaper to procure hot rolled and billets from various markets and use it for their downstream production. Chinese cost of production is not what it used to be three to four years back. That has to be understood very clearly. The cost of product producing downstream, China is slowly becoming an affluent nation. It's not the nation which we knew 10 years back. Slowly, their costs of production are increasing. Their products are getting differentiated. They are not producing the tins and cans anymore. The final end products are getting more and more uh, discrete, diversified, and more complex. So they are able to tolerate a higher level of product input price. And their labor also is getting diversified into higher complex products. You know, money is hot potato. Nobody wants to hold it. And uh, this is the time that we need to have a, uh, we need to dress up much better than we used to do for a beauty contest to claim that, uh, let's say, a very, very scarce resource. It's, uh, I mean, I, I already gave the analogy. I mean, liquidity is shy. How are we going to attract it? So we need to focus on the business. This is one part of the story. Let me also take a step back to the uh, to the industry, uh, let's say dynamics, where you talked about the mergers, consolidations, acquisitions, etc. You remember during the 2008 uh, or prior to 2008, um, as financiers, we unfortunately uh, walked into the market saying that please borrow from us and you do almost whatever you do with the money that was kind of the i mean i'm, I'm apologizing from my uh, ex-colleagues uh, and ex-industry peers that was kind of the sentiment i mean we were the bankers were very easy in uh, granting monies you know lctr facility facilities for 180 360 days no questions asked uh, no closer look into the genuine business so these times are over uh, this is the time that uh, the money is more clever. It needs to ask better questions. Uh, because of the, uh, regardless of what has happened in the past, because of the only post-COVID, uh, there will be a lot of uh, consolidation, there will be a lot of opportunities we are expecting in the market. Let me bring it in a, a, a different perspective uh, uh, or try to introduce a perspective to that, to that one. The, Big investments uh, from a, a funds perspective, there's there's a lot of a portfolio that is uh, currently built, and because of the shyness of the money, uh, money we uh, we are expecting to see a huge deleverage, uh, deleveraging in the uh, in the overall financial investments. This is going to have a cascade down effect onto all industries. Still, is no uh, exception to that one. Uh, so yes, you are right. Uh, there will be opportunities uh, much cheaper than uh, the previous valuations, 25 cents to a dollar uh, per cut. Uh, I hear you there. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, this time for a change, the, the banks, the investment vehicles, are going to be more easy to finance them. This is where, as industry players, we have the responsibility and the opportunity to play it wise. We shouldn't go for any asset uh, we should review our strategy and plug it into the uh, proposition, into our niche, 
so that we have a longer term perspective. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you, gentlemen. It's been fantastic. My name's Andrew Glass from Avatar Commodities. Um, your yeah, your presentation was fantastic. There's a lot of common themes running through there as well. Obviously, the pandemic has suddenly changed the landscape for all industries, um, including the steel value chain. But what I was wondering is your opinion on, do you believe it will drive the steel value chain in the region to adopt significant innovation, both physical, but also digitally and specifically for financial tools, both inventory financing, structured financing, um, and in particular, um, and a better absorption and appreciation of the derivative tools that are out there to allow structured pricing for clients. And I heard conversation about solution mindset, um, working with your clients, um, which is great, but this is a big part of it as well. So I'm just wondering what your, what your opinion is. Maybe to Mr. Venkat to start. Yeah, uh, Andrew, that's a, that's a fantastic question. Um, I will talk as a, as a manufacturer, uh, and I'm sure it affects traders also. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this question from our perspective and then the customer's perspective. From our perspective as manufacturers, uh, the pandemic is a very unique situation. It doesn't happen every second year. But volatility in the steel business happens every, every three months every four months. Uh, when I got into the sales and marketing line more than 20 years back, there used to be a slow cycle of pricing. It used to coincide with winters in CIS and you knew the cycle. Uh, but with increased connectivity due to the internet and so many other things, we are seeing a very short, uh, a very high frequency volatility in the market. Uh, this is making it very difficult for any of us to maintain any reasonable prediction on our balance sheet and, our, and on our P&L. So from a procurement point of view, especially for rerollers, it would be good if we could have tools we, with which we could hedge uh, the way we buy stuff, you know, where we have some kind of digital contracts. And, uh, and that's where China has done very well by having a futures market uh, where people are able to, you know, uh, have some participation in the market and have a certain amount of control uh, or at least have a backup in terms of uh, how they play the market. Uh, the same applies to customers also. If you look at our uh, costs, more than 80% of our cost is steel procurement. The rest of the procurement department is not that important as much as steel procurement is. In our case, we buy billets and hot roll coils. Look at what happened to us. We lost $100 on hot roll. We lost $100 in billets. How does anybody beat that sort of uh, drop in price? Okay, even a, a futures market or a, or a derivatives market will not help us in, this, in, in a pandemic situation. But in a normal volatility cycle, you can always manage it much better. But the problem with you know, for example, the LME came up with a billets contract with so many other people. Uh, one or two other exchanges tried. But the issue with all these exchanges has been liquidity. There was not enough liquidity in the exchange. It never took off. Many people, uh, there are a few friends of mine, I don't want to name them. They tried many times in Dubai. Dubai Commodity Exchange and this and that. Uh, but I think there has to be a very deep engagement with the participants of the business to make this actually happen. I think uh, the Chinese government got involved in the futures exchange and got it operational. I think the banks in the UAE and the GCC need to put their head because at the end of the day, if the large mills and customers lose money, the banks tend to lose money. I think the banks together need to form a commodity exchange and say, look, guys, you need to use this exchange. Individual private entrepreneurs trying to put up exchanges is not going to work because it doesn't generate the, uh, the transaction velocity to make it sustainable. But yes, I agree with you. It's a good concept. And uh, if something happens in that direction, it will be welcome. Thank you.
I agree uh, with uh, Mr. Al Jabr uh, about this. Uh, uh, in fact, I have been talking with my uh, customers in Saudi Arabia, and they have told me in the last few weeks that the production has been multiplied by uh, not production, the demand has been multiplied by threefold, which is surprising. So people are uh, speculating right now. And I'm afraid that this will have an effect in the next few weeks, once the VAT starts to be put in place, there will be no demand uh, and there will be a decrease in demand until the stocks are sold. So uh, this is, of course, this is what will happen, Yani. I see that in uh, September, uh, production in Saudi Arabia will, uh, will drop if uh, the manufacturers right now are not uh, meeting uh, the, the demand and they are working day and night. Some of my friends said we were very lucky to buy billets in April uh, from the local market. Uh, when the corona started, when the COVID started, uh, there was a drop in prices in the local market as well in Saudi. Saudi is known uh, by the prices uh, of uh, raw material as being a little bit higher than international market. While during the COVID crisis, the prices went lower. So. A lot of smart people already uh, bought uh, some uh, raw material that right now they are transforming into rebar and they are responding to the, to the demand, the high demand of the market. But I'm sure that this high demand will not be uh, for a long time unless, unless uh, there will be a, a, a control of the sanitary situation and then we will be all uh, getting back uh, slowly to normal uh, life and to normal demand. But this will not happen before end of uh, 2020 and beginning of, the, you know, 2021. Uh, thank for this question. This is a very important question. You, you know, the oil uh, prices is is uh, is, uh, is uh, became to the stabilization and start raising up, and uh, you know there is OPEC plus meeting is uh, scheduled uh, next week, uh, as I heard, and I'm sure it will it will boost more stabilization to the oil prices and boost it up uh, to be high. Uh, yes, there is a very uh, government uh, direction. There is big government direction for reduction of, of, of cost and uh, spending for uh, infrastructures. Uh, and, uh, you know, Aramco is, is part of government. But uh, what I know and I heard, uh, Aramco, yes, uh, they will uh, uh, delay some projects. Uh, and, and, and But there is some essential project which is ongoing on. They focus on in order to to uh, to increase the capacity of production and ability for for gas uh, upgrades, and this is uh, became uh, area where where they are focusing. And uh, yes, I heard for them uh, some uh, project which is uh, any obvious that they will uh, respond it for sometimes till things more clearer and you know try to to minimize. Uh, uh, capital investment in, in this time and see uh, how things will will change how how how, how the market will respond uh, is, is, is the, the the oil prices will will continue in that uh, in that uh, studies and, and expectation to be uh, end of the year in 50 uh, 50 uh, range so uh, you know uh, and, and already announced that all of oil and gas uh, companies uh, even Aramco uh, but uh, a scale or, or but uh, that 50 and above is the area that oil and gas company will start or will focus on improvement and uh, uh, investment to upgrade uh, the production and all of these things. Uh, as as uh, everybody uh, stress here and the, in the, my, my colleagues and panelists, uh, they stress on, on it's unclear and the, the recession is there and it is uh, something unexpected and we uh and th this is the the best guess you know, you know by by mid of uh, 2021 you may see uh, any something uh raising up in, in a way or another but uh, you know still things is not that much clear uh, most of the expectation or studies is, is just uh, but uh, upper and, and uh, lower uh, percentage of where we stand. But uh, this is the best guess, and I hope for better. But you know, when when you see the last two weeks uh, movement of the oil price, it's promising, and I hope as 
as a Saudi that these uh, oil prices will, will continue to that minimum uh, or the level that uh, it will both uh, give the breath for the producer and uh, the buyer. 